Businesses like Taffy here were vital in transporting over 7,000 tonnes of cargo along an 11-mile route every year. Find out how they did it and which county we're in in just a moment. Today's buyers can't wait to escape suburbia and settle down in the countryside. Our straight-talking couple set the bar high for our properties. Not as wide as I would like it. Smaller than what we've actually got at the moment. Yeah. Luckily, some rooms do measure up to their expectations. That's my perfect size kitchen. This is exactly what we want. Yeah, that's really nice. Today we're in Devon and this is the Grand Western Canal in Tiverton. Completed in 1814, the canal ran from Tiverton to Taunton across the border in Somerset and was designed so that tugboats carrying loads of up to 30 tonnes could be pulled along by a single horse. Now the calm waters meant there's very little resistance and this incredibly efficient use of horsepower was used successfully for around 200 years. Today it's purely used for leisure purposes, but this barge called the Tivertonian and young Taffy here are just one of a small handful of horse and barge partnerships across the whole of the UK. The county of Devon is set in the southwestern sleeve of England. With distinctive coastlines totaling 450 miles in length, the northern shores benefit from rugged cliffs and golden sandy beaches, which look out over the Atlantic. To the south lie the popular seaside resorts of Paynton, Torquay and Brixham, which make up the English Riviera. Characterised by exotic palms, this area is home to one of the mildest climates in the country. Further along the coast is the sheltered harbour of Dartmouth, where the Pilgrim Fathers moored up in the Mayflower en route to the New World. Its sailing heritage is still very much in evidence today, with the Royal Naval College standing proud above the estuary. Inland, the sweeping hills of Dartmoor National Park are home to a scattering of attractive villages, such as Chagford and Lusty, with fine examples of traditional thatched cottages. Offering both coast and country, it's easy to see why Devon is an escapee's paradise, offering real potential to get away from it all. With so much on offer, it comes as no surprise that the average price of a detached home here in Devon is £25,000 more than the national figure, coming in at just over £307,000. And there are areas in this county where prices are even higher than that. For example, if you want to live near the highly desirable beaches and seaside towns of the English Riviera on the south coast, brace yourself to pay up to 20% more than a similar property inland. So what is it about this beautiful region that has so attracted today's buyers? Well, let's meet them and find out. Former property developers Karen and Keith met on a blind date set up by work colleagues 18 and a half years ago. Up until recently, their lives have been pretty full on with work, managing their own business. The idea of retiring as young as we have was really just to chill out and take things slowly. They've both lived in Rochford near South End in Essex for most of their lives, but now they're no longer tied to the area for work. They can't wait to escape the ever-growing population moving to the town. We've always had fields behind us and it's always been very, very quiet. And then um, three years ago, uh, a developer put in plans for 600 houses and a school as well, um, which will just totally change um, our living, really. With six children and four grandchildren between them from previous relationships also leading their own busy lives, now it's all about investing in their own future. You've only got one life and you've only got one go at it, so I think you should fit in as much as you can. We haven't got to worry about anyone else anymore. It's just our time. Yeah, <laughs> sounds like you care about me. I do. <laughs> <laughs> They've decided to move to Devon because Karen has many happy memories of spending holidays there as a child. It's beautiful down there. You've got the beaches, you've got the countryside, and it's just somewhere I've always wanted to go. And you like the clotted cream? I actually don't like clotted cream, though. No. <laughs> 
As self-proclaimed socialites, they're also looking forward to making new friends and pursue leisure activities which they've never had time to do before now. We would like to get involved with the community and I would like to do start up a supper club and invite people around for dinner because I do like doing, you know, dinner party entertaining. Yeah, I think just joining clubs and stuff yeah. that, you know, whatever's going on, whether it's... I want to join a pensioners cricket club. Although they're planning to retire, Keith and Karen are also keen to maintain their young at heart attitude. Sometimes we'll go out and I don't know, one o'clock in the morning, we're like, oh, let's go and get in the hot tub. In the middle of winter, in the rain. <laughs> I don't think we've ever acted our age. Still keep the element of uh, humour, don't we? <laughs> you yeah, have to. <laughs> they currently live in their own separate homes, so even though Karen regularly stays over at Keith's, a joint venture is definitely at the top of their agenda. This move will change our lives. We've never had our own house, so it'd be nice to get our own place and uh, choose it together. Um, and it'd be nice to live together after all these years. Despite decades of property development experience, Karen and Keith are unfamiliar with the housing market in Devon. They're optimistic about what the county has to offer and open-minded about location. I'm catching up with them to get a clearer picture of what they're hoping for from their new home. Well, Keith and Karen, welcome to beautiful Devon. Very young retirees, I have to say. Good moisturiser. Is yes, that what it is? That's <laughs> the yeah. answer. Yeah. I'm liking that. I need the secret. <laughs> what are you hoping to do when you make this move? I would like to just have more of a community life, join in with things and, you know, see what's going on and, you know, just get to know people and chill out, really, basically just enjoy ourselves, don't we, really? Now, both of you worked in the property business, so why do you need our help with this, Serge? You see, I am feeling the pressure. We're really hoping that you can find a summit that we haven't seen before. What is it? What are we looking for? Detached. OK. Four bedrooms, three yeah. or four bedrooms. Um, hopefully, with a little bit of land. That would be nice. How much so, do you want, Keith? How much land? I'd like to say an acre plus. And Karen, what about the actual style of the property? I quite like contemporary. Um, as long as it's really got a nice, big, modern kitchen, cos I do like entertaining, I do like cooking, and that is usually our hub, isn't it? So it's got to be big enough to accommodate all the children, the grandchildren and our friends. What about the geography, the location within the county? We're open to any location as long as the house is right. And obviously it's within walking distance of a community. So that you'd like basically. right on the edge of a village? The yeah. edge of a village. Yeah, that'd be good. ideal, yeah. Remind us then of your budget, how much we've got to spend. We're looking around about the 450000 maybe uh, 475 if it's the right property. And do you think that's a realistic amount? I mean, Devon is an expensive county because so many people want to move here. Do you think, realistically, you're going to get everything that you want for that amount of money? We'd like to think so. That's, uh, you know, that's... We can get a property for that. But, I mean, if we've got to extend it a little bit more, then not a problem. You know, we can do that. OK. Well, we do have some splendid properties lined up to show you. It is a glorious day, I think. We have to get started. Right. <laughs> Follow me. <laughs> With a maximum budget of £475,000, our couple are after a modern four-bedroom property which has enough sociable living space to accommodate visiting grandchildren and entertain their friends. They'd also ideally like an acre of land and to be on the edge of a village. We've got a diverse mix of properties in store which addresses the various elements of their wish list. After every viewing, I'll be asking them to guess the price. Our final offering is the Mystery House, where unconventional living and 20th century technology have been thrown into the mix to challenge their property buying preconceptions. The reason I want your help is with Keith, he knows what he wants, and I think this will give him a bit of a broader outlook on properties. So, Keith, are you less flexible? Would that be fair to say? I know what we want. That's, the, that's you know, well, what we're looking for. So are you the one that I might have to convince? Do you reckon Karen's going to be easier? Or Karen's is it really more flexible, yeah. Definitely yeah. More yeah. Flexible. yeah. Karen's definitely more flexible. It shows always says, keeps never happy, but I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah, I am. <laughs> if we can find the right property, I will be. Well, we're not too far from the first one. Let's see if we can at least get a smile out of you. 
With location top of the agenda, our property search begins in the rural village of Georgium. There are more amenities a couple of miles away in the coastal village of Croyd, which lies within the North Devon area of outstanding natural beauty. Facing west, the windswept waters of the Atlantic and vast sandy beaches attract surfers here from far and wide. Back in Georgium, there's a local pub surrounded by pretty cottages and on the edge of the village is house number one. So our first property here in North Devon, it is a converted barn and this is your property. Right. Okay. Interesting. Completely different to what I was expecting, but I can't wait to see inside now. Come on, Keith. You're looking at me. I know. It's attached. It is. And I'm wondering where the uh, acre or two is. This house has lots of merits. Let's step inside and hopefully all will be revealed. Excellent. Dating back 300 years, this barn originally belonged to the nearby farm. It was converted in 2004 by the current owners and has been tastefully renovated, so hopefully the style and space will measure up to expectation. So you've got a good hallway which leads to the kitchen. Nice kitchen. Not as wide as I would like it. It's Quite, lovely and yeah, modern, which bit, is what I do like. Yeah, it's, but it is a bit smaller than what we've actually got at the moment. Though. Right. Patio doors to your garden with that amazing view. Beautiful view, yeah. That is the main area to dine. Mm -hmm. The dining area is yeah. not big enough for us. Because our table was also at least twice the size of this the one we've got. Right. Size is an issue. Let's see what we make of next door. And do mind your head, because this is your sitting room. Really nice lounge, but probably on a little bit on the small side for is us. It? It's a little bit darker in here than what I would like for a lounge, because I quite like big windows. Plenty of natural sunlight. A lot of the time, it is only going to be the two of you. Well, it is, but the only thing is, the intention of coming down here was to hopefully meet new friends and as Cameron doing her supper we club. We love entertaining, you know, yeah. yeah. So, ideally, are we thinking inviting, like, 12 people round on a Saturday night? That would be normal for us. Yeah. Would it really? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, it's good to know. Let's keep going. OK. Also on the ground floor of the sitting room, there's a small double bedroom with its own ensuite, which could be useful for visiting guests. With the downstairs covered, we're heading upstairs, where there are three further bedrooms. There's a potential double and one single, as well as a tiled family bathroom. I'm hoping the proportions up here will get the thumbs up as we inspect the largest bedroom. So here's our master bedroom with its own ensuite oh, as well. oh, lovely. toilet and sink. This is a good size, yeah. Yes. And obviously the views out here. The views are Excellent, yes. yeah. The balance in living space downstairs, I'm taking it, is mm. the priority, isn't it? It yeah. is. And upstairs, you don't yeah. mind the bedrooms being a little bit smaller. No. I think the entertaining area is more important to us. OK, well, I'll let you explore the upstairs on your own. Let's head back downstairs. OK. Look at the garden. And also, you've got to start thinking about putting a price on our first property. OK. Thank you. Outside the property and just off the courtyard, there are two good-sized garages. The rear garden benefits from a large paved area, ideal for outdoor entertaining, and the lawn gently slopes down towards open fields. This may be slightly smaller than Karen and Keith expected, but perhaps they'll be buoyed by a suggestion I have up my sleeve. It's a good size, but I think we're all going to agree it's not the acre that you'd not set your heart on. Yes. What you do have, though, is the field behind us. But having spoken to the owners, the one option might be to see if you could rent the land. Mm -hmm. Nice garden, but it's going to be too small for us. We do spend a lot of time in the garden, yeah. even in the winter, because we've no. got, and we've got a hot tub. Yeah, we've got a lot of garden yeah. furniture. What is this about hot tubs? <laughs> Your eyes lit up then <laughs> no. when you said it. <laughs> is this going to be the first thing that arrives oh, in yes. the garden? <laughs> it, yeah, it will be, yeah. OK, well, for the first time, our first property, let's see what price we're going to put on it. Who wants to go first? I would say 425. Keith? Uh, Beans, it is attached. I would have probably thought 400. It has only just gone on the market, about two weeks. The asking price is £450,000. Now, are you okay. shocked by that? Yeah. Yeah, Beans, it is attached. I would have thought that was a bit toppy. This is only the first house that you've actually seen here in Devon. I mean, sometimes it is a bit of a reality check, you know what your money will buy you, mm -hmm. certainly in an area like this. But well, I think it's worth another look, anyway. Oh, yes. okay. Have a browse and I'll catch up with you later. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. 
£25,000 under their maximum budget, this converted barn with a contemporary interior has four bedrooms and is set in a desirable edge of village location close to the coast. Although it hit the mark on style, it seems the space may have fallen short of their great entertaining ambitions. I think when I saw it, I was a little bit disappointed because uh, we'd asked for a detached and uh, obviously the first thing we noticed is that it was a courtyard setting and it was an attached building. I really like the house. I do like the fact that it's contemporary. My main concern is an entertainment area for the family. We've got grandchildren and we've got lots of friends that come round, so my priority is the downstairs areas. It's a very nice house, um, great location, really well decorated, but unfortunately a little bit too small for me. All right, you two, have you seen enough? Yeah, that's have, great, yes. thank you. OK, well, that was our first property. Not a bad start. More to show you, shall Excellent. we? Yeah. Hugging the dramatic North Devon coastline and drawing visitors from far and wide is the picture postcard fishing village of Clovelly. With cobbled streets and cottages that cascade down to the sea, it's a perfect snapshot of the county's preserved heritage. Three families have governed the village since the 13th century, and since 1878, the Hamlins have owned the estate. This means that all residents' properties are leasehold, however, with no holiday lets permitted, and tenants required to spend at least 200 days a year living here, there's an extremely tight-knit community. Karen and Keith are keen to find out more about the history of the county, so we've arranged for them to meet Clovelly tour guide Yana Edwards and residents Eli and Noah, whose ancestors were vital to daily life in the village. What do the donkeys do here in the village? Historically, they were absolutely crucial for bringing things mostly out of the village. Any heavy objects like fish or coal or limestone, they'd offload ships onto the donkeys and they'd take, take the goods, usually up to the top. How do people transport their goods nowadays? People use sleigh-like apparatus and they slide along the cobbles. You bring in your, all your worldly goods when you move into this village in a sledge. Everybody has their own personal little sledge for their own personal shopping. One of the most influential owners of Clovelly was Christine Hamlin, who inherited the estate in 1884 and was passionate about the restoration and preservation of the village. Its unique identity still endures today. There's a lot of different architectural styles in this village. Um, a lot of that had to do with Christine Hamlin. She would travel somewhere, she'd find some architectural style she really liked, and she'd come back and she would just apply it to whatever she was restoring. Mm. It's a really nice view from up here, and I can see there's a key down there. Is that still an active key? It's a very active key. It's active for different reasons, perhaps, now than it was. The harbour breakwater was built to encourage herring fishing back in the 16th century, which enabled Clovelly to become a thriving fishing port. However, 300 years later, when that industry was on the decline, Christine Hamlin turned her attention to encouraging tourism here. By the late 19th century, boats were ferrying two to 3,000 people a day across the Bristol Channel from Wales. Although tourism is now the main industry here, two fishing families still remain in Clovelly. Stephen Perham is a sixth generation fisherman and is the current harbour master. How long have you been harbour master? About 12 years, just, just over 12 years now. Yeah? My cousin was harbour master just before me, and my, my father's been harbour master, my older brother's been harbour master, so it has been in the family you know, for quite a few years. It's just it's an honorary position, you're given it by the estate. It's a lovely place to live and work, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. What is your job as a harbour master? We get quite a few yachts coming here in the summer you know, to make sure they're OK, and we allocate moorings as well as looking after the fabric of the harbour wall. Has uh, tourism impacted on the fishing industry? It's, it's a very small fishing industry yeah. now. There's only sort of three or four of us that, that fish commercially mm -hmm. all year round. In its heyday, there was over 80 fishing boats working from Clavelli, and many for the herring. And everybody in the village would have been associated with the herring in one way or another as well. Well, Steve, thanks for meeting us today. It's been really nice meeting you, and it's really nice to see uh, Clavelli from this side. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Thank yeah, you yeah, for yeah, telling good us all about it. That's no Thank problem you. at all. Karen and Keith seem inspired by their visit to this glorious corner of Devon, so let's hope our properties pique their interest too. A 
Our second house takes us over the border into Somerset to the village of Brushford. Close by is Dulverton, a historic market town in the heart of the West Country and a popular base for visitors, as it's located on the southern edge of Exmoor National Park. Here, the River Barn is crossed by its Grade 1 listed bridge, which dates back to medieval times. The river is a protected site of special scientific interest on account of its wildlife. Dulverton offers a range of amenities catering for its tourists, and the surviving buildings reflect its textile manufacturing heritage. Situated three miles away and with views over the National Park is our next offering. So you're standing here thinking, well, which is the property? Mm -hmm. This one is our next house. It's nice. Yeah? Very nice. Yes. Yeah, I like that. So even though it looks like it's brand new, in actual fact, this used to be an old stables. What is it that appeals to you? Is it the local stone, slate roof? The big windows. Ah, <laughs> yes. Like Keith? That. I'm keeping an open mind so we've had a look inside. <laughs> OK, all right. Well, you know what? I'm not going to say any more. Let's see what you think. Good. Should we Excellent. start the tour? Yep. Definitely. Formerly stable blocks dating back to 1874, this property was later part of a purpose-built hotel established to accommodate the influx of Victorian visitors to the area. It was converted into a home three years ago with modern living in mind, so hopefully they'll be impressed by the space on offer for entertaining. Oh, this is really nice. Yeah, this is better. Exactly what I'd like. <laughs> That's really nice, that isn't it? It is really nice, yeah. So is this what you're thinking yes, of as a sitting room? Much more really nice, yeah. yeah They've really tried nice. to keep as many of the features they can, mm. but you still have that contemporary feel that you're after. It does. It wouldn't be a struggle to fit everybody in. You know, you've got the children running around and, and it's bright, it's light, it's nice. Certainly a fantastic start. I think you're going to like what's next door. The all-important wow. kitchen. That's my perfect size kitchen. This is exactly what we want. Yeah, that's really nice. Isn't it? Do, yeah, definitely. Really nice. And you've got the bifold doors there as well, so plenty of light in here. Plenty of light, beautiful light. Huge dining table. How's it fit there? Number yeah. one stop for the supper club, this definitely. new hobby that you want. Absolutely, yeah. Really nice. So far? So far, so good. So good. <laughs> right, we'll head upstairs. Also on the ground floor at the other end of the sitting room is a second reception room, currently used as a study, which could be a playroom for the grandchildren. Making our way upstairs, the striking double height stairwell and galleried landing exposes the original character of the property, which is flooded with natural light. There are four double bedrooms in total. Featuring exposed brickwork, the first is currently being used as a snug with its own ensuite. The second also benefits from an ensuite, and the third is neutrally decorated. This lies next to the family bathroom, which is also high spec and contemporary. I'm hoping the size and decor up here will keep those positive reactions flowing as we look at where they would sleep. So, this is your master bedroom with ensuite. This is really nice, nice size, good size. Really good size, yeah. Yeah, even though it's got and sloping ceilings, it's yeah. really still a good size room. Definitely. It's ideal, isn't it? And the views, beautiful yeah. views again. That's not too sad, is it? No, Wake that's up not to a bit <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's going to be a hard act to follow. Uh, well, Keith, you said to me in the car, you're the hard one to please. He nearly broke into a smile then, Karen. Did he? Yeah, easy. Okay. <laughs> Don't be silly. Don't be silly. <laughs> sure. I'm going to cut while I'm ahead. Let's, let's take you outside. Hopefully, that'll be the icing on the cake. Outside the property, there's a carport and parking for four cars. At the back, the garden has two large sun terraces with steps down to an expansive lawn which looks out over open farmland. The patio, you could get ten hot tubs on there should you want to. One's enough. <laughs> <laughs> and then just over our shoulder on the right, that is the National Park. Do you like it? Really lovely. Amazing view, that is. That used to be a hotel mm -hmm. that has been converted. That was done in about 2002, so you do have neighbours. That would be a big concern to me. The house is absolutely lovely. The gardens the are great. Perfect. Don't mind not having an acre because it's so open, but to sit in your garden and be looking up at all them flats, I think that would be a deal breaker for me. Right. Well, let's see what you think of the actual price of the house. Our converted stable block. How much do you think the asking price is? I would have thought 495. Okay. 
I think it's going to be 500. The asking price is, it is over your budget, mm. it's £485,000. Yeah. Wow. yeah. The owners are aware of your top budget of 475 so they would be happy to have a conversation with you. But obviously, if that wasn't next door, if perhaps that was a field or a meadow, you could be looking over £500,000 for that, I think. I would love you to have another look around, just the two of you. Okay. Check out all the bedrooms, the mm -hmm. finish. Be my Thank guest. You. Thank you. Thank you. Nudging just over budget at £485,000, this 19th century former stable block provides four bedrooms and an exceptional quality interior. Its contemporary style and flow would provide them with the ideal living spaces they need in their new home. Overlooking Exmoor National Park, this property also gives them a great location just outside a village. Well, it's a good size room, isn't it? It's amazing. Really nice room. I love the house. The house is everything that I would want our house to be. The kitchen area, for, for my what I want to do, I want to entertain and, you know, do a supper club. It would just suit everything I would like. I could certainly see myself living in the house, but uh, not where it's positioned. Being so overlooked would be an issue for me. You know, that's what we're trying to get away from. All right. I thought there was a good second there when I thought that was it, we'd done it, we'd cracked it with this house. You're so, so close. You just can't get over really being overlooked, close. can you? No, unfortunately, it's the people overlooking. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not giving up because tomorrow we have our mystery house. We'll see how we get on with that. Looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, good, come wait. on. <laughs> It's the second day of our house hunt in Devon with Keith and Karen from near South End in Essex. Armed with a budget of £475,000, they'd like a property that will suit their sociable lifestyle. Coming up, our mystery house offers a vision of the country dream that takes their breath away. I don't think you could pick a better view, could you? No. It's really lovely. And I hope I don't lose my marbles as I turn my hand to creating a glass masterpiece. I think that's as far away from a circle as you could possibly get. It's more like a lozenge. So Karen and Keith, our fun-loving couple from Essex, are desperate for a new life here in Devon, but they haven't done an awful lot of research. So I think yesterday, our first day showing them around the county was a little bit of a reality check. They've got a healthy budget, but they also want quite a lot for their money. So today, with the Mystery House, I'm feeling more confident. They love entertaining, and with this property, I think it could have all the answers they're looking for. For our mystery property, we're heading back into Devon to the quiet village of Blackborough. Nearby is the village of Kentisbeer, set in the lower Calm Valley. Here, charming whitewashed thatches line the winding country lanes, and right in the centre is a local store with post office and grade two listed pub. Back in Blackborough, on the edge of the Blackdown Hills in the heart of the village, is our super modern mystery house. So our final property is, of course, the mystery house, and here it is. It looks quite big. Hopefully it'll be big inside. Different. It is different, yeah. This is one of the original kit houses that came over by Laurie from Scandinavia around 1995. I'll reserve judgment so we've had a look inside. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to fall. Well, come on, now, be honest, tell me what's going through your mind, because reserving judgment doesn't help us work out <laughs> what you're thinking, or is it you've got nothing to say? Go on, tell me. It's can... uh, busy round here. OK. It's hard to judge from the outside. OK. All right, well, let's see if the mystery can win you over inside. inside. Thank let's you. Have a look. Our 20th century mystery house majors on delivering excellent thermal insulation and energy efficiency, so it's extremely economical to run. However, it does throw down the gauntlet of upside down living, which could challenge their conventional mindset. This is an upside down house. It's nicely open plan. Yes, they're very nice. Beautiful views, yeah. amazing views. You've got this wonderful living space maximising that vista. Yeah, it's a good sized lounge, so the space is good. Yeah. Have either of you ever lived in a property that's topsy turvy? As they no. Say? no. 
Keith's quite a traditionist. He likes sleeping upstairs. <laughs> I like going up to bed. Yeah. You're both itchy to get out on that balcony, aren't you? Yes. Come on. <laughs> I think we should. Built to benefit from its elevated position on a clear day, views here can stretch as far as Dartmoor, 40 miles away. You know, appreciate we do have neighbours either side, but these were the type of views that the you're seeking. These are amazing. Absolutely amazing. I don't think you could pick a better view, could you? No. It is really lovely. I'm really glad to see that you've got us a lake and also probably a couple <laughs> of acres. <laughs> Well, we'll go into that in a little bit more detail when we go into the garden. But we're going to continue with the house. I'm going to take you away from that view. Keith, if you wouldn't mind leading the way back into the property, turn left because we're going to take a look at the kitchen. So here we have our kitchen. As you can see, it's got a dining table in it. Um, it's ready for a little bit of love yeah. and a refit. Yeah, I would probably change the layout as well, would you? Yeah. yeah. It's not very sociable if I'm cooking and we've got no. people around and they're sitting through there. No, and, this would probably you know... be too small, wouldn't it? Well, I'm not going to give up with our mystery house. I'm going to take you downstairs because that's where the bedrooms are. Excellent. Okay. Down on the ground floor, there are a total of four bedrooms. A compact double and a good-sized single are currently children's rooms. There's also a further snug single, a neutrally decorated family bathroom and a handy utility room. But we're heading for the master. Yeah, it's a good sized bedroom. Yeah, and it's obviously just, excellent. That's views really as well. lovely. I mean, yeah. Sit in bed for your cup of tea, looking out there, would be perfect. Really lovely and bright in here. Yeah. I like I like that idea of the of the big windows. With your own balcony, access to the garden, good size ensuite next door. Yes. What do you think? I've still got this thing about privacy, and the garden finishes there. I assume that people go out there to the land and the pond, and you haven't got the privacy. I do understand what you mean about privacy. Let's go into the garden, and then okay. you can see it in all its glory and make that decision. Excellent. Okay. Having explored the quirky interior layout of our mystery house, it's time to explore outside. To the rear of the property, there's access to storage beneath the house, and with long-reaching views over the Blackdown Hills, the garden has a decking area, ideal for entertaining outdoors. There's also a shepherd's hut, which might prove to be a hit with the grandchildren. Karen seems to be embracing the merits of this property more than Keith, but hopefully what's on offer out here will give them a fresh perspective. It looks more modern and it looks bigger from yeah. here than it does the front, I think. Anything else you more spotted, character. Keith? Uh, I've spotted a hot tub. <laughs> At last, we found one. <laughs> what is it about hot tubs that you two love so much? I think, well, where we are, we's, ours is really private and everything. I'd imagine if you sit in that one, you could actually wave at the people in the field and, you know, <laughs> and the lake. As, Who you do know. you think's going to be in that field? <laughs> Not at the time of night we're in <laughs> Sadly, you don't own the field. No. But if you wanted to, there could be the possibility of actually buying it or renting it. But how much do you think this is on the market for? I would say 450 No, I'd say less than that. I would have probably thought 14 OK, but the asking price is £435,000. Would that tempt you? No. Still not. <laughs> no. no, not because of, you know, it's not the money issue. It's, uh, it's just not the house it, for it's you. Just it's just not the house for us. It's just not the house for us, no. Yeah. Um, I'm going to send you back in so you can reacquaint yourself with the property. But before you do that, I think you should take a look in the shepherd hut there. That is a keeper. <laughs> it's such fun. Go and have a look. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. £40,000 under budget, our contemporary mystery house is configured so that the four bedrooms and living areas make the most of those stunning countryside views. It's also in a central village location. Oh, this is really lovely. This is different, isn't it? The grandchildren would love this. They'd think this is there. Yeah, it'd be ideal, wouldn't it? They stayed the night and a lovely sleepover. Yeah. I was quite surprised at the mystery house. It has got a well factor to it, but the kitchen doesn't flow with the dining room and then the garden. They're all separated. I don't think it's quite the house for us. Very nice lounge, absolutely amazing views. A um, little bit disappointed with the lack of garden again. It has made me realise that probably we need to spend more money to get what we want. Well, that's it. You've seen all our properties now, including, of course, the mystery house. I think it's been... Well, an interesting few days. 
Very, Very interesting. interesting, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. We now need a proper chat, don't we? I want to hear your thoughts. OK. Yeah. Although Devon is well known for its striking coastlines, beautiful rolling hills and national parks, it also has a rich industrial heritage. One industry that prospered for over 160 years was pottery production, which took advantage of the natural abundance of clay in the county. Potteries grow up all over the region, and although the kilns under these chimneys are no longer fired to create earthenware, traditional skills are still in use. I've come to meet Andrea Harkin from Teen Valley Glass, to find out more about the ancient art of glass sculpting. Andrea, good to meet you. Hello there. Now, when you think of Devon, well, certainly for me, I think of agriculture, tourism, beautiful countryside, arts and crafts, but not pottery. No, the Bovey Tracy Pottery Company was based here at around 1843, and it did employ about 300 people. Unfortunately, in around 1957, it went bankrupt due to changing markets, and so it was left to ruin. So how did you find your company here? Well, we were making glass and toys and games just down the road. We expanded and we moved to this site in 1990. The business originally began as a games manufacturer producing solitaire boards. However, they quickly moved on to producing their own artisan marbles. So in 1981, they opened their own glassworks. This is an extraordinary studio. It's like an Aladdin's cave. Now, one thing that has caught my eye is this. Now, that is like a work of art in itself, isn't it? Is. it? These are all handmade using traditional techniques that have been passed down through generations and generations of craftsmen. This is craftsmanship, isn't it, at its best? Everyone is an individual piece. Yes. Well, I've fallen in love with this little marble. How easy would it be for me to recreate something like this? You're welcome to have a go. Let's see how I get on. Andrea, yes. thank you very much. Thank you. Coloured glass marbles are thought to date back to as early as the 15th century in Venice. Glass workers used to gather up remnants off the factory floor and roll them into little balls to take home for their children. The Victorians went on to master techniques used for making marbles that are still used today. Senior glass maker Matt Sharp has been sculpting glass for 16 years, so I'm hoping he thinks I can cut it. Now, how long would it take you to make something like this? Uh, probably about six, seven minutes to make one of those. What's the first step? Right, we've got to take the gather of glass out the furnace, which is over here. How hot is it in there? Uh, it's uh, 1,100 degrees. So all I'm doing now is just putting the rod into the glass, giving it a few turns, then coming back out. So if yep. you keep turning all the time, then what we're going to do, we're going to start rolling it in the white first. Just keep giving it a dusting? Yep. Enough? Yep, now we need to go into the grill and warm it up. And the heat in this furnace, similar or less? Uh, it's a little bit more. This is about 1250. I mean, I can feel it on my face. Now we can come out and add some more colour. Keep turning? Yep. Is that enough? Yep, that's lovely. OK. Back in? Yep, so back in and melt the colour in again. OK. Next, some small plates of iridescent glass called dichroic are added to the softened surface. The glass is then heated again to make it more malleable so it can be rolled on a metal plate to smooth out irregularities. Now that looks like an interesting sweet at the moment, doesn't it? Yes. A further layer of clear glass is added to the outside to seal the colour inside and it's rolled again. And you're just getting used to shaping the glass. You can push a little bit harder now. It's more like a lozenge. Tools called jacks are then used to squeeze the centre of the glass to form the beginning of a marble before it's blasted once more in the furnace. And then what we do is put it in there and we start to spin it and hopefully it will start to make a round shape. This is well so done. difficult and you make it look so easy. Lots and lots easy. of practice. But look at that, it's transforming in front of my eyes, okay, the brilliant. colour. We're just about there now. The final part of sculpting a marble is to separate the rounded end from the rest of the glass. And when we knock it off from the line, there'll be a little sharp rough patch on the top. That was so off, delicate. Knock it off like that. And then with our little torch here, we just try and melt that top in and make it as round as we can. So we've got to have a nice even heat around the marble just to try and make it back round again. I'm really pleased with that. Am I able to take it? Uh, no, because uh, we've got to cool it down now, so we've got to pop it into one of our kilns for about 15, 16 hours. Because if we don't do that, it will shatter. Matt, I am delighted with that end result. I think you helped me far more than you were probably meant to, but 
It looks perfect. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. It's been a fascinating insight into the process of glassmaking and heartening to see skilled sculptors like Matt continuing to champion Devon's craft heritage. This has been a tough few days. We have struggled. Not with Keith and Karen. No, they've been very complimentary about all the properties we've shown them, but for what they're after on their budget, it's proved so hard to find. Now, interestingly enough, they've made a few comments and observations, especially after the mystery house. So I'm keen to hear what their conclusion is. Karen and Keith, well, we started off with a clean slate, desperate to leave Essex, new life in Devon. Mm -hmm. But finding you, that perfect property, has been well, it's quite elusive for us, hasn't it? Yeah, I think so. It hasn't quite met, you know, our criteria in as far as size of the buildings, you know, and, and land, and you know, which is what we're looking for. But we did get very close with our second property, just over the border in Somerset, tantalisingly close. Very yeah. close. Yeah, it was 90% now. 98% now. Yeah, the house. So pretty close. <laughs> Perfect. You adored the view. And then we had a few neighbours next door, didn't we? Yeah. You like entertaining. You could invite them all over for your supper He likes clubs. entertaining. Yeah. He doesn't like being overlooked. <laughs> <laughs> so on reflection, now you've seen some housing stock, do you think you can get what you want on your budget in this particular area? I think the properties are available in that bracket. Yeah. But then we've got to make compromises. Well, I think if we can adjust it maybe 50, another £75,000 more, we will probably get what we're looking for. But for us, it's long term, so it's worth spending that little bit of extra money. Is it possible, do you think, to find an extra £75,000? Yeah, yeah, it will be possible, yeah. Hopefully, you will find that dream home. It is out there. We've given you a taste. Mm -hmm. A little bit more exploring, you might find it. I'm sure we will. I'm sure we will. Yeah. Let us know, though, won't you? We, we will. certainly will, yeah. Wonderful. The party house, that's what I'm <laughs> going to name it. Thank you both so much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think that was a fair assessment of the situation from Karen and Keith there, and they've come up with the conclusion that if they are going to find that beautiful, entertaining party house that they're so after with the grounds and the privacy they crave, they are going to have to dig just that little bit deeper. In all honesty, I'm delighted that they came to that conclusion that I didn't suggest they had to find more money, but I think that's the perfect answer. We wish them all the best. And that's it from me from wonderful Devon. I'll catch you again on Escape to the Country. After the reality check of what they could get for their money, Karen and Keith have decided to raise their budget and are continuing to scour the county in a bid to find their ideal country home. If you would like to escape